Hello, nerds. You're sitting here with Richard Stitch Thomas of the bands Mushroomhead and Ventana. Quiet on the set. Rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. And I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Yeah, generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Okay, nerds, it's future me as I'm editing, and there was an issue with the audio about halfway through. The audio that we're using, the microphones that we're using, cut out. It was an error. I don't know what happened, but we still have good audio coming from the camera, so that's why it switches halfway through. Otherwise, enjoy this interview with Stitch from Mushroomhead. Mushroomhead is playing freaking Fort Collins, Colorado. Yes, we are. <laughs> And possibly, so how much of you guys getting these shows is you? Because I know you guys are very, very hands-on. How right. much of this is you and how much of this is booking agents? Um, as far as booking shows go, it's only just booking agents. Yeah. Um, we basically say, hey, we, we, you know, we want to go out from this date to this date, book us a tour. And they book a tour. Sometimes it's not the most desirable routing. Sometimes you're really going out of your way to play a hole in the wall sometimes, but sometimes those wind up being the best shows. Um, but um, the, the booking agent, you know, handles all that stuff. Because it would be, literally, for all the things that Mushroom Red has to do on a right. daily, if we had to book our own shows on top of it, put a, <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Uh, all right, so I just I just keep, can't get over the size of the stage you guys are playing on, because right now you're a seven-piece. So you're, you're Correct. Gonna be, you're going to be... A little tight on that Hody Taft note, and that, I just can't get over that. But the place I actually wanted to start this was you said in uh, the first email that you sent me that you're actually a video game nerd and you're really mm -hmm. into horror movies and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, right off the top, what is your what's your favorite thing to play right now, video game wise? Um, I just finished Far, Far Cry 5. Nice. Which, which when, How that, was that? when that ended, I was really pissed off. <laughs> um, I could swear on this, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay, all right, F bomb's coming. <laughs> um, but I just started uh, God of War, the new one. Nice. I, I, um, I haven't played that one yet, yeah, but which, I've uh, seen a bunch of really awesome Let's Plays. Which I'm, I'm depressed highly because I don't bring my PS4 out here. And yes, right. I play PS4. There are the Xbox <laughs> people are going to be like, Whoa. PS4. That was going to be the next question. The, so colors, are the colors are better. Um, it's. I mean, a lot of the games are actually built on the PS4 architecture before they port them over. Like Mortal Kombat, True. as much as I'm an Xbox guy, Mortal Kombat is native to PS4, and they ported it to the Xbox. Right. So I was in a tournament for Mortal Kombat, and it was like, nice. this is so much smoother. Right. <laughs> and just something about the PlayStation controller, it just feels right. proper, especially when you're playing a game like Mortal Kombat. Like when I played Mortal Kombat X on 360, mm -hmm. I got my ass handed me play on PS4, no one can touch me. Right. You know, it's like, it's just a natural, you know, thing. But anyway, back to the video game thing. Sure. I, I, I started playing God of War uh, before we left, and then we had to leave for tour, but I don't bring my system out here because everyone will beat on it, you know? It's like, right. and then it's everyone's PS4. Right. And I'm not, no, I have the limited edition Darth <laughs> Vader one. I'm not bringing that shit out on tour. Um, thanks to my sister that worked at GameStop, Kayla Thomas. Um, but, um, so yeah, I started playing, uh, that and then I just gotta wait until I get home. So June third, I get to finish God of War. So I've been trying to not read any of my right, friend, friends because right. some of my asshole friends in my Facebook posts they'll start spoiling that shit. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you know, and I read one thing that happens in the game, which I won't repeat in case anyone hasn't played it. <clears throat> but I found out something of a weapon that Kratos obtains. Right. And I was like, I read it and I was like, you motherfucker! Like, I was so pissed off. <laughs> it was like instantly triggered. Um, but i um, highly waiting for um, The Last of Us 2 to come out. Um, what, what else? I don't even know really what's... There's not many games. Um, We're anticipating Mortal Kombat 11 uh, yeah. because E3 is right around the corner and going with their release schedule, yeah. they should be announcing it the week before E3, which is about two weeks out, and then E3 is about three weeks out. Right. So hopefully they'll stick to their schedule like they've done for the last four years. Nice. Um, is so speaking of E3, are, do you get an opportunity? I know you guys tour extensively, but do you do you get an opportunity to catch stuff like that 
on your off days? I've always wanted to, but I never have gotten to go to like, right. like the awesome like ones. Like not even the YouTube coverage? No, or... I haven't been able to go to any of those um, just because it's always schedule conflicts. I haven't missed um, you know, Comic-Cons I want to go to right. all the time. Luckily, I've been able to hit a few in Cleveland because now Wizard World comes through there now, which mm-hmm. is... For know, another the franchise of you know Comic Con, so we finally got something that matters aside from just the little rinky dink ones they have in hotel lobbies. Which you go to them, it's like you pay twenty five bucks to get in. After five minutes, you're bored. Right. You know, so it's like, um, you know, I'm glad that there's an actual convention now in Cleveland. It's been getting bigger every year. The first year it was there, I paid like hundred fifty dollars for that Bruce, for the Bruce Campbell experience. Oh man. I'm gonna. I remember. I remember getting there early and there's a whole line of people waiting, and I had my. I was one of 15 people that paid you know, right. the extra money, and I'm just walking by like, suck. <laughs> but it was cool, because it's you meet people like that, yeah. and you're just like, shit, you're Bruce Campbell. And then you think of all these cool things you're going to say. And but then, it's Bruce and, freaking Campbell. And then as soon as you get up to him, you're like, die like evil dead. <laughs> like, And then you just like, it's like the and Ralphie and the Christmas story, you know, he goes to see Santa Claus, right. and he doesn't ask for the Red Rider BB gun. Right. And then he's just like, what the hell are you doing? But, um... But yeah, I, I get to go to like sometimes conventions, but um, none of the video games. I mm-hmm. wanted to because right. I, I get so jealous. People get just you know try out all these you know, upcoming games, right? See all these exclusive trailers, and I'm online the next day looking at like blurry camera phone <laughs> versions of all the trailers that got released, like the trailer for God of War when it first right. came out. Uh, There's that Death Stranding game too that oh, I'm, I'm highly uh, interested There's... to see what the hell it's even going to be about. Everyone, so. Uh... Hideo, Hideo Kojima mm-hmm. announced that there is going to be gameplay footage at this year's E3. So that'd be nice because <laughs> so far it's just the been, trailers are so strange. Yeah. But and Mads Mikkelsen recently did an interview where he he didn't really leak anything, but he said that his background as a dancer helped him get into character for Death Stranding, right. which is very interesting. That means. Right? Because yeah. I was very very bummed out that the Silent Hills never happened. The, the PT, uh, yeah, yeah, the Toro is also against shoot Death yeah, Stranding. Huge, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that, um, <laughs> but um, I'm just gonna miss that Silent Hill shit because that stuff's my jam too. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, and I, they, they released one, uh, oh no, that was a Resident Evil, I get it, mm-hmm. but they, re- they released the VR Resident Evil anyway. Uh, moving over to movies, what would you say is your favorite like horror series or uh, horror movie right now? Because the horror genre recently has been. Dying. Yep. It's really hard to answer that question because it's like every 10 years, my answer becomes different. Right. You know, and it's like, it's getting to the point where it's like, how, it's like, it's like 30 some years later, I'm going to keep saying Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, just keep saying Friday <laughs> the, the 13th. The original? The, or, or, <laughs> what the fuck do you I'm think? Just, the original. I'm just, just checking because right. I was a bit of a fan of the, the nope. not the remake with uh, uh, Rorschach. Um, right. Which I actually thought it, he would have done a. He was the best part about that Good movie, job. and he wasn't that great. But uh, the the uh, new nightmare, I, I was kind of a fan of that. That was the last oh, yeah. Wes Craven. I, I was I was a fan of that one because um, the idea of it, mm-hmm. it was Wes Craven, so he can do whatever the hell he wants because <laughs> he made the first one. So so that's why I clarify because some people I, say new nightmare. Yeah, I enjoyed the idea, which I noticed a lot of movies are starting to spin off that idea mm-hmm. of like, oh, we're gonna make a movie about making another movie, mm-hmm. and that's how we make it make sense but I like that whole idea of you know the evil entity just taking on the image of something that scared right people it was it was, it was a pretty damn good movie yeah uh, were you are, you are you a fan of much of the modern horror I mean you did have the snarky no I mean the only the modern okay now that <laughs> like, like think about it most of the modern horror stuff that I that I like now scares. it's never um, the stuff that I like never hits theaters or like Fair it's enough. in theaters. No, for sure. It's in theaters for a week. Or, or like super limited there's release. There's that uh, the new movie company A24 that's yep. putting out amazing films. Like every one of almost almost all of their movies I've liked. Um, the Witch was fantastic. Yeah, I thought that, that was, was a that beautiful was movie, one. front to back. People hated it. I don't know why, because I think people just their attention span. Because they want a bunch of jump scares. Anyway. But they wanted a bunch of stupid CGI yep. witches ripping off CGI heads or fucking. I don't, I don't understand, but, like, that was an honestly more creepy, more in the element of, like, the Shining mm-hmm. type of horror, where it's suspenseful, the music and the atmosphere is actually bringing you into the world, and if you actually aren't looking at your cell phone, you actually would know what was going on, but right. that's what I know a lot of people, you know, in theaters, they have ADD, that just, and they're just like, mm-hmm. wait, what's happening? I don't know. This movie's stupid. Yeah. Like, it's That's just, why they have the jump scares oh. to keep them. 
It's so stupid, but I love that one. I thought it was great. The more I watch it, the more I pick little things out. Um, if no one has watched it with subtitles, I highly recommend watching it with subtitles. Really? Because you catch things that are being said that you don't hear. Or just, you know, because of the English is so old right, fashioned. Right, right, right. It's like 1600s, mm-hmm. like what? I don't even it's know. It's like borderline old English. Yeah. Um, but you hear like what the kids are singing in the background when Thomason's like doing her chores and um, like certain things that the father says or Thomason says, like you only get the gist kind of of what's being said because you're like, right. What the hell? The blah, blah, blah. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like but reading the Bible. You, What's going you, on? But when you read it, it like it makes a little more sense. And it actually is a little creepier because nice. it almost makes it feel more like it's a foreign film because you're watching it right, with right, subtitles. Right, right. So if you haven't watched it with subtitles, I recommend doing that. Right on. Uh, with, with the horror imagery of one of your two bands, Mushroom Head right. specifically, uh, and you guys have done soundtracks. You did Saw. You did Freddy vs. Jason and stuff. Is there... Is there a drive to continue doing stuff like that? Or is there even a drive for Mushroom um, Head to venture into not just music videos with that kind of imagery, but maybe even a, a film of some sort? Um, yeah, I mean, we always want to do more horror soundtracks. Unfortunately, those opportunities come into play when you are approached right. for those opportunities. Right. It's not like, of course, we would be in every goddamn horror, <laughs> horror movie known to man if we could, but like um, a lot of those connections were in that Universal umbrella. So right. Like Universal right. Owned, so like that's why Freddy vs. Jason, Jason happened. happened. That's why uh, um, not horror based, but that's why Scorpion King happened. Right. We wrote an original for that, which um, turned out really well for us. Which was better than the rest of the yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. The movie was a little. You know, but it was like Hercules. Since in then, the, the Rock screen. has taken much better roles. Touche. Because he's a great actor. Um, so one of my favorite movies is Southland Tales. Have you ever seen that one? I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever seen it. Uh, it's, it's made by the people that did Donnie Darko. Oh, okay. So okay. It's but it's way more bizarre than Donnie Darko. Fair enough. But it, lo- it has a lot to do with that one whole mm-hmm. different parallel universes, time travel stuff. Um, very hard to find. <laughs> and the whole cast is like normally comedians. It's like Sean William Scott, The Rock, uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar, John Lovitz, right. uh, Christopher Lambert, um, Fuck, Mandy, Mandy, Mandy Moore, um, the guy that plays Booger from Revenge of the Nerds. Right. Um, it's like it's like cameo, 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 cameo. No but they're all like these comedians being serious. Joss Whedon uh, had a thing on the commentary for Serenity because I am that nerd, um, where he said it's it's honestly easier to get a comedian to do a serious role than it is a serious actor to do a serious role because comedians understand the balance. Right. And so that's very interesting that that movie is on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, recommend checking that one out. It's a good one. Uh, just throwing this out there, if you guys have hooks anywhere, James O'Barr is looking to fill up the soundtrack for the new Crow movie. So <laughs> that'd be cool. Well, if I, you know how to get a hold of him. I, I, tell him I, to get a hold of us. I just, I just covered a convention that he was at, and he was talking about. He's putting like Unsane on the soundtrack, and he's looking for more bands. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, talk to him for two seconds the, uh, afterwards. Original Crow soundtrack was, the was amazing, when and I was he wants school, to when repeat I was high school, that. Because it had like. It had um, Rollins band, it, but it had Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, they made songs for, for that, that soundtrack. soundtrack. Those songs were never available anywhere else. Yep, pre-internet. Yep, back when it's like, oh, you don't have that CD. Well, you don't have those songs. And he was talking about how he had to convince Reznor to do that Joy Division cover because they couldn't get the rights to actually get the Joy Division song. So he oh, really? had to get Reznor to do the cover so he could get the rights because he's friends with Trent. Yeah, very very cool, cool soundtrack. Right. Um. While we're in the vein of movies, last year you did a bit of a movie. You did voiceover, voice work for an animated movie. You heard about that. I did. Right. You won an award, man. I mean, it's not a giant award, but you well, still won an award. It didn't go to me. It went to the to, creator. To the creator yeah. of the But still, you're a part of that. Yeah. So is that something on your personal docket of things that you're going to um, pursue? And, and or then, is Mushroom Head and Ventana pretty all-encompassing? No. I mean, I would love to do more stuff like that. Just like anything else. Sure. Luckily, that... Because he had um, searched at squirrels, do guy do a thing, um, 
Who else? You had, I think he had uh, the guy from Psycho. I think he had Psycho Stick. Psycho Stick, uh, I think, was one of them. I and think, did Jimmy Urine from MSI? Do I don't believe I saw him on the list, but it could be. I don't want to misquote that. Yeah, I didn't see the IMDb <laughs> listing. I, <laughs> I, just, I saw an article about right. the winning. I just so. know he had a he had a, lot, he had a roster of bands that I was like, oh, I've heard of all these bands. I've played That's with cool. these guys. I've right. played with these guys. Um, these guys are good. <laughs> um. But uh, but nothing like in the near future. No, I mean I'm I don't have an agent that pers- pers- <laughs> pursues my voiceover you know career. And it was really nerve nerve. You think it'd be so easy to do? He's like, oh, I want you to do like the news. There's like a newscast interruption. Right. right. And it was like this. It's like six lines. You know. It was still a thing. It took me three hours to record six lines. Wow. Just because I every time I would do the voice, I'm like, should that be the voice? And then I realized I was impersonating Tom Tucker too much. <laughs> like I was doing like almost a rendition of. What I, every time I watch a cartoon and there's a news anchor, it's right. usually really cheesy. Right, but then right, I was right. like, I can't do that. I can't do that. It's already been done. So I had to come up with my own, you know, and that's weird, the way the cookie crumbles. silly jerk off voice, you know, like <laughs> cheesy news anchor. But um, but yeah, it's a cool show called The Olympians. Um, and he's still trying to get it, you know, picked up mass and, and, produced. and the pilot. But I know he's done um some screenings for it, and he's he's won. You know, he won best comedy at the. I have it written down. Portland Comedy Film Festival. Right. One best That's what, animated yeah. comedy. Yep. Yeah, and I and he just uh, he came out to the show. Um, we played in Mesa, Arizona. Oh, nice. He came right out on. and hung out for a little bit. I wish I had more time to, you know, chat with him. But he's a super nice guy. That's really um, cool. And he's passionate about what he's doing. So hopefully that that works out. Um, but yeah, the whole show is like uh, the premise. It's like a, it's a it's a spoof on the Greek gods. You know, if right. the Greek, if all the if all, all the mytho- if right? all the mythology, mythological, mythological <laughs> the word I'm looking for, characters were alive today, you know, in modern society, you know, up in the heavens, right? What, how they be interacting? It almost has the, uh, a, a vibe of that show. Um, is that show drawn together? Drawn together. Oh yeah, yeah. Drawn together was one, and then they had on MTV was uh, Monster. Monster High or something like that that Tom Green did a voice for back in the day. I've never even heard of that. And then they had Stupid Americans on Comedy Central with something along those same lines. Only it was all like demons right. living in current mm-hmm. society. So it's re- that's 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 I'm I'm a little bit more interested to check it out a little bit further now that you kind of put yeah, it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like the animation. I mean, I was I was blown away because I mean, honestly, you know, when you first hit me up, I'm like, yeah, I get these messages all the time. <laughs> hey, I'm making a movie or I'm making a thing. Why don't you do something? It's like, yeah, whatever. Just send me the, send me the trailer and send me the thing. And right. When you're serious about it, and I'll do it. And he was, you know, serious about it and sent me some sketches. And then when I saw like the final, like animated pilot, it was like, holy shit! Like he's right. actually got his shit together. That's really cool. So hopefully it takes off because then that would mean more work. For more me. work for you. And then you'll get an agent. Yeah. And then you'll get more voiceover work. And do more voice that's how work. Rob Paulson started. That's how a lot of people, a lot of people are getting. <laughs> Actually, a that's lot of work nowadays. legit. How Jess Harnell, who did, who's done a million different voices. He did Animaniacs right. voices. And you're familiar with Love Jess. The Animaniacs. Uh, he was, he was, he was wacko. Oh, was yeah. Shit. And he was in a band. I mean, he was in a shitty. 80s uh, cock rock band, but he was in a band before he went into that. Did that on the Lark, auditioned on the Lark, and has been doing basically nothing but voiceovers since. Uh, so switching gears a little bit, uh, over to your proper career as a musician. Uh, it was announced on Blabbermouth, and Blabbermouth I sometimes have to take with a grain of salt. In 2016, right. they said you guys were going into the studio to do a follow up to uh, the your last record, Butterfly. Right. Um, Righteous wow. and the but- the righteous yeah, the righteous and the butterfly. And the butterfly. I uh, had a brain fart. I apologize. <laughs> uh, how much of that was true? And with the recent lineup shakeups, has that affected anything? Are you guys having to go back, or were you even in there to begin with? Oh yeah, we were obviously in there. We we own. Our You're home. always in we there because our, we yeah. have our own studio. That's how we are with stem cellular right. studios. Um, and there's always you know things being done. Um, but yeah, songs were written, and you know everything. Everything. The, the new album's been in the works for for a minute. Um, but yeah, with the, the current lineup changes, obviously that's. So you got to go back and record. But how? We don't got to really re-record. Um, okay. They've already been doing sure some stuff as well with the new guys. And yeah. yeah, no, I I saw the video you guys posted to Instagram right after you hired uh, Jeffrey's replacement. Mm-hmm. Um, and dude, sounds probably better than nothing. Well, I don't want to get. 
I know, like this is my person, my right. own personal right. opinion. I, I've always been. I really enjoy Nothing's vocals because they are very unique. Of However, course. sometimes I felt right. like he was pushing too hard. Just from mm. a, a musician standpoint, I felt like he was trying to blow his vocal cords out. Mm. <laughs> and it's, it's, sometimes that comes through. And and I felt like this cat had a little bit more control over his voice. And I was I was a super fan from the first second he opened his mouth. So right. I not one of those that's angry about right. the switch. And no one should be. Yeah. I mean, before I was even in the band I mean people were coming in and out of Mushroom Red. right it's always kind of been Mushroom Red's always been this theater performance band of like if you want to be in it you're in it and if you don't want to be in it there's the door right because the other people want to be in it um, so it, it's it's been changing for years and every time it changes I feel like it's always gotten better for know? sure and it just it's, it puts you in a rough spot because you gotta deal with the internet now yeah, that, that was that was so going to be one of the, the things. Was you said with the lovely support of the internet recently. You said this is why I truly hate. I'm quoting you. Correct me if Uh-oh. I'm wrong. Which this is, which 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 person you're quoting? Uh, <laughs> it, 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 Blabbermouth uh, quoted this oh. as to you. Oh. You said this is why I truly hate the social media era. Everyone gets to judge you before you even have a chance to figure out what to say. Right. It now that there has been a little bit of breathing room. Mm-hmm. Is there? I mean, aside from the I've known these guys, because that was very eloquently said. If you guys haven't seen the quote, I will link to the uh, Blabbermouth article down in the description. But very eloquently said about, you know, I've known was, these guys I was, forever. I was impressed with my own writing on that <laughs> one, actually. But that's why you got to wait for your responses, because, right. like, when it first happened, you feel a wave of emotions. You're pissed, you're happy, you're, like, scared. You're like, yeah. what the fuck? I want to punch this dude's face in, you know? Like, But then, you know, you sit back and, like, Good thing I'm not the kind of person that's gonna go on the internet and like throw out every single word you right you know you want to put out because then it, then people will quote you like Bla- Fair, I, yeah I made a Facebook post and then Blabbermouth quotes it like did, it's journalism did a whole they didn't thing call on me it. for an interview yeah. they didn't call and say hey can we use this quote it's just an official thing like all these journalists they attributed it to to a social media post right. I, I have to be fair to them but you're right it was it's pathetic it was, though it was legit just them looking for because they post like fifteen thousand articles a day and when you do that right. you have to grasp at straws right which is why i take what they say most often with a right grain of salt i just thought that was very eloquent and and is there anything that you guys have to say officially now i mean we'll get into the the, the dirty parts in a second right. but <laughs> is there is there an official like Reasoning that you guys are, are telling the, the the PG version, I believe you put it. No, I mean it's just just, I, just I, what you well, you know, it's, posted. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to like interviews to turn into like. I'm, I'm, I I mean, totally don't want you to drag anyone through this. Yeah, not at all. Thing or, or this or that, you know, um, because I found that you know even if it's honest and it's true, that you turn yeah, people off. Absolutely. Because people have a perception and. They may have really liked that band member, and they truly are just unhappy that they're not there anymore. They don't know how to feel, you know, because they were a fan of the band. So you don't want to discourage those people either. But you know, all it is is that it's, it's Mushroomhead. It's always been Mushroomhead. It's always going to be Mushroomhead. Mushroomhead's always solely based on the idea of what it could be, you know. Right. And I truly feel that with these new people in place and the positivity of the band, the direction of the band, the fact that we all. For the first time in years that I've been in the band, we all hang out together. We all do things together. We all right. smile together. We all laugh at each other's jokes. No one's wasted drunk on the bus <laughs> causing problems. No one's trying to fight each other over stupid drama. Like, it's the most healthy environment. Right on. It's been That's a long really time. Awesome. So if anyone wants to try taking that away from me, they can try. But so, it's not going to happen. Let me let me phrase it this way, and then we'll move on. Is Is the situation with either church or jeff is the situation along the lines of when uh j-man left initially or like when kill switch did their uh lead singer dance or is it a yeah, little they, less amicable yeah, the, than that kill switch has a, quite a bit of a carnival <laughs> going on don't they it's like the new guy's back the old guy's back right the new guys back. Oh. they actually just they're recording their new record and they just did a, a song with both of them on vocals that's cool yeah they kind of like what we did on righteous kinda, butterfly yeah and and i honestly was blown away by that record right. because of the three because waylon's voice kind of splits the difference between j-man and jeffrey and just right. was so cool and i i that album blew me away but uh back to the question though is this is this kind of along those lines is it pretty amicable is this like better off kind of situation again i don't want you to drag it's, anyone through the mud. it's it's a way better off situation um 
for them and us because obviously you know it was just time for things to change sure you know um and i'm glad it did because it just you know it was getting rough right for a while there so having to deal with certain people's personalities that right are usually very self you know those people that can be really bad very for self-serving business. that's kind of and what it comes when it's down a band to right where everyone has to kind of work yeah to make this happen and certain people aren't they're sitting right. on their ass all day on their ipad or they're just worrying about getting wasted like that's very destructive to the people that are working right from 11 a.m to 2 a.m every day on tour and meanwhile then you got then the reward at the end of the day is hearing a certain person bitch about nothing that doesn't matter and it's like sorry your <laughs> sorry your water bottle wasn't in the right place on stage you're playing a bar and grill there's there's we there's two crew seven guys. eight nine of us on stage right now grab your own damn water oh shit <laughs> you're not you're not james hetfield sorry but um even james hetfield would grab his own damn water right but you know like i said the the environment overall the most important thing is the environment is super positive the next record is going to freaking blow doors. I, I, I'm chomping at the bit. Um, so it, that kind of brings us into what is it... There's there's two sides of this question. First one is, what is it that keeps you waking up and going, I want to play music today? And then the other half of that is, what was it that made you decide one day, music is going to be what I do for, the, for a living? Because I get a free ride to legal states. <laughs> Because he gets to come to Colorado yes. and get legally smoke high. All kinds of weed for free. Not free. Uh, freely smoke weed. <laughs> that's what I mean. Out in the open. I'm not high right now, and that's the problem. <laughs> I need to get high. Um, no, um, the, the, the true answer um, to that, it, you know, part of that is true because, you know, I get to travel and see all these awesome places. I mean, I never would have went to Germany. I never would have went right. to uh, Russia. You know? Who the hell willingly goes to Russia? You know, like, <laughs> Besides, weird. maybe the president. I watched, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, but um, I, when I was in Russia, I watched these uh, a gang chase after somebody with machetes. Right. Holy shit! Weirdest thing in broad That's daylight. In, that is in downtown. A couple guys just running with machetes after someone. I'm like, well, where the hell? I'm going wow. back to the hotel. So I'm, I'm going to take him aside. Rain? This is hail. Hail. So we are in a dad's bog, and we're downstairs, thankfully. Otherwise, this would be ten times louder. Uh, it is hailing outside, and so if you're hearing that, that's what that is. Hopefully, these mics aren't picking it up very well. Um, so uh, so that's that's where you're at with your music. Now, what was it, though, that, that you said, okay, yeah, this is my really, life? We keep getting derailed. It's, it's other, all good, man. Things, Bird but, walking um, is kind of half of no, what I do. No, it's good, because <laughs> sometimes people can't get me talking. They'll just be like... They, you know, they answer me a question. I'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, uh huh, yes, of course." <laughs> Coming out in October. <laughs> All right, later. Um, but, um, but yeah, the traveling part is awesome. Getting to play in front of people is what I've always wanted to do. Absolutely. Since I went to my first concert, you know, when I was 13, 14 years old, and I saw Nine Inch Nails for the first time. I saw Marilyn Manson when he was just starting out. And right. When it got to the Antichrist Superstar tour, where you had the insane production, and the shows were so fucking kick ass. I'm like. So that was that was your aha moment was just yeah, going to concerts as a kid, just going to concerts and just and loving music and the interaction of like that's where I met all my friends that like you find like minded people that I'm still friends with today, right? Not the superficial assholes that right. you come across on a daily basis, <laughs> um, but real you know people that have a real understanding of where you come from. Um, but it's uh, meeting fans and meeting people and seeing excitement on their faces them giving a shit who i am right because to me i'm fucking just rick, rick thomas from north royal <laughs> you know i don't i don't know any better and then i come out to idaho and some dude's like holy shit rick, rick, fucking it's stitch. freaking stitch man and i'm like cool <laughs> sweet you know and i'll sit there and talk to you know fans you know, right i'll be eating lunch randomly and then you know at, at the bar next door and a fan will come in wearing a shroom t-shirt he won't even realize until he does realize he's like holy shit and then then I'll see on Facebook that he tagged my fan page. He's like, I'm sitting here next to Stitch having lunch. And it's like, <laughs> so what? But I love I'm just a dude. You know, my shit stinks like everybody right. else. But it's cool yeah, because, like I said, I've, I grew up my whole um, life kind of being the nobody loser right. in school. Everybody picked on, you know, no one liked. Um, so it's cool to, like, you know, have that other angle where there's people I don't even know in other countries that give a shit about what I do. And they're inspired by what I do. Right. Know, whether it be... 
you know, one of my bands or the costume I wear or the fact that I dress a certain way on stage or I build haunted houses, you know, like I hear all kinds of different angles. So that's awesome. And that's another reason why I'm motivated sure. to get up, go out. I'm always in the crowd talking to fans all the time, always being accessible because I remember going to shows and you could never approach no, a ever. band member. Good luck. Yeah. You know, you could never... The dude in the band wasn't as randomly, Mike Patton wasn't as randomly sitting at the bar <laughs> having a drink when you're at the Faith and War concert. Actually, one time you guys came through here, uh, it was down in Denver, it was after the Lamb of God show, which, by the way, at one point, Lamb of God opened up for these guys. I don't know how many yeah. people know this. And Avenged Sevenfold. And Avenged Sevenfold. And uh, I think that show was Lamb of God and Flaw, and it was supposed to be 40 Below Summer, but their vocalist got sick, so they had to ditch out on the rest of the yeah, tour. Right. Um, but no, the, the show I'm, I'm specifically talking about was at a, a venue called Isle of Park Saloon. You guys were the headliners for a Battle of the Bands in Denver. And after the show, I was there with most of my band members at the time. And after the show, you guys were just chilling at the bar. Right. And we came up and we're just bullshitting with you guys. And it, like that it totally, exactly yeah. one of the things that like my vocalist at the time about shat himself. <laughs> it was, Gravy was still on uh, guitar and uh, Venus was still on bass. And he bought gravy like six shots, and like they were getting drunk together. And I was like, "Oh, this is fun." But it's, 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 really, because gravy never really drank. It's somebody. He bought somebody okay, six it shots. Was, it might not have been gravy, but it was somebody he would, at the he bar. He would sometimes like cut loose, but most of the time he never really drank. No, no. He just like he liked to just sit by and. Or, judge or I was being lied to. It's very drinking. possible Nick yeah. was lying to me. Right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, 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 I totally appreciate the approachability of you guys. Um. Well, Speaking I mean, you of, have, you have to be. I mean, because it, it's just. I mean, we're very humble with knowing where we're at. Well, and and that really leads us into the next line of questions. And if, I, and if I didn't socialize with people every day, it, it, you'd go insane. Oh yeah, you, you on would, a bus you with, would... with thirteen people. <laughs> you see every single day. The diversity is needed. You wouldn't you know? have all that gorgeous hair on top of your head. It's all gray, but yeah. it's still there. At least. <laughs> But uh, so you joined right about no, 2001. 2001, which was shortly before the Lamb of God tour, which was as you guys were promoting XX, right? right. Double X. Yeah. Um, so you and and that was really just stupid compilation. Not stupid. I fucking love that right. record. Well, the, to the rest of the world, it was. It was new. your first record. Yeah. But that was that was early exposure to a lot of people too, because you had the Eclipse deal, which got you guys out here. Um, right. What is it like? Because not only. Did you join Mushroom Head, but you stayed in Ventana? What is it like doing double duty? Because you Ventana tours with Mushroom Head very, very frequently. Mm -hmm. Not as frequently as I would like. It's, right. It's hard. It's hard for my singer to kind of get out of his job that he has. That sure. Sometimes he has to request the time off. But um, the double duty gets rough, but it keeps you more busy. Right. Like now, I'm just like in your days fly by with that because then it's like. Okay, load in, uh, uh, find the promoter, get your stuff for the day, sound check, doors are open, Ventana's on in an hour, shit, I gotta get ready for that, and then Ventana's off stage. Mushroom head, Mushroom head down. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Day's done. So the tour definitely speeds along nice. more often. Plus, like, I'm then, like, me and Tom and uh, Robbie, is, you know, the other drummer in Mushroom Red, he's filling in on this tour because he's out with Mary Manson right now, my actual drummer. Right. He texts for uh, Manson, and obviously that's more of a priority yeah. gig, unfortunately. I, unfortunately, unfortunately, but it's still to, good on him, though. Right, right, it's good on him, though, and hopefully one day it leads into us you know, getting on Going tour on tour with Manson, that would be insane. But a lot of that <laughs> becomes very political, too. Like That's it's, true. It's all booking agents yep. and who owes who a favor. And, uh, well, and who thinks they're too big a shit, because... Right. Not to throw out names right. out there, but Manson. <laughs> right. Uh, right. But, so... Uh, fuck, now I got... Oh, uh, uh, you guys, you, you mentioned it already once. You guys were on Universal uh, shortly after XX. Uh, you, you put out 13 and... Fuck, what was the record after that? <laughs> well, I got, I got lost. What did you ask? Yeah, yeah, I started the, thinking about I was, I was going, I was going uh, because you guys were on Universal for two records. Yeah. And yeah. then you signed to Megaforce, which is really just a distribution deal, right? Um, I mean, it's, you know... It's 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 um it's just it's um I don't know how to what to really call it. I mean, it's it's a label deal. I mean it's not like um but they don't the the, the point that I'm I'm trying to get to is they don't come in and say we need a single. 
they no, come in and no, say, they let, what music they do you guys much, have for us? They very us? much let Mushroomhead do you guys, you guys are what Mushroomhead does best. By and just, large, independent at this point. Pretty much. We're independent with help from right. a label that actually has distribution and can get the... Whatever so you CD have stores backing. are left, <laughs> can get the CDs in the stores, and has the, the you know the distribution connections with Best Buy, and maybe can get an FYE deal or you know sure. silly stuff like that. Um, but they only do the states. Okay. Yeah. I I uh, I might have been confusing them with somebody else. I might have been thinking of Hollywood again. I for whatever reason when I was doing the research for this, I kept confusing Hollywood Records and Megaforce Records, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so you guys, what what's the difference? Because uh, you were still doing Ventana. Was there was there pressure from Universal back in the day for you to just do Mushroom Head? Oh. And now that you're on Megaforce, where you're a lot more lax, what is how does that relationship change? Um, no, it's not really. It's never not never been an issue. No, it's never been an issue. Because I mean, side projects get done in downtime anyway. Right. You know, so it's like. Once the you know next room record's done or the touring cycles you know over, then it's like okay, everyone's got four months to go do their other thing, you know, or whatever. Or you can know in advance that okay, we're not touring in August or we're not touring in November. I can do my other stuff and it's not going to interfere because um, every pretty much everyone in the band has another project. Some right. Of them yeah. Have more or, side projects than I do. Or day jobs. Right. <laughs> right. Just the uh, side projects help help out. Right. They even things it's out. where it's like okay, when Shroom's not doing this, I can do this and you know helps you keep afloat so what would be one thing that you could say that would dispel because there's a lot of there's still even in 2018 there's still a lot of people that think you're in a national touring band you must be a millionaire oh, right you must you know yeah. be able to you, you know fly everywhere you go every day because every day someone tells me how nice the buses were in and then i reiterate to them that we don't it's not our bus we rent, rent the bus from a company and it's expensive as shit because you have to pay the driver to yep. and you're paying for diesel fuel and you're Brian, paying for generators to right. run all day and I mean those things don't get good gas mileage no. you know so you're basically spending almost half of the money you make just on your transportation and that's just you know the basic breakdown of right it, to where people don't understand that they see the bus they see the band they see you know all this stuff and you know all it really is is just one big bill Brian so Fair. Have, that's why you have to stay and right. keep playing and not have days off, and that's why you have to sell the merch and yeah. all that. And, and that's something that. that's something that I try and do a lot on the channel is uh, you know try and dispel a lot of myth, a lot of mythology about everyday life because I do right. I do a cooking series because people are like I can't cook I don't know how to cook it's really simple here let me show you so when when I do interviews like this it's like well there's got to be something that you can do to deconstruct this so that people don't think that you're making millions and right. uh, Brian wish. Brian Fair once told me that and I hate name dropping but I love Brian so mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've only met it the, met the dude twice so it's not like we're right. friends or anything I'm not trying to portray that mm -hmm. but uh, he said always rent. Because when you own it right. and it breaks down, you're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah, um, I've watched bands go bankrupt because they're like a band with a hot single on the radio and they're huge. You right. Know, making all kinds of money selling out shows. Then they buy a bus because they can afford to throw half a million dollars on a bus. And then two years later, the transmission goes. <laughs> $80,000 transmission. Yeah. Or you know, each tire on a bus is like $400 a pop. Yep. And like, maintenance on those things it's absurd it's absurd oh my god I, I can't even granted being responsible for you know the main because we're with the, the bus company we rent from when we need them and like if that breaks down or we, we've gotten an accident with two bus accidents three bus accidents over the years um within 12 hours the new bus is right there you're not yes. missing a beat you're just inconvenienced by having to move off the bus and having to move all your gear and shit you know yeah but um worry about traffic right <laughs> but um but it's instant answer if you right. were a band that owned a bus your tour's canceled because mm -hmm. you're not making tomorrow's show and maybe if you get it fixed in time but like what are you gonna do lose a week of shows and you're stuck in that city right paying for hotels for 13 people so you're trying instant, to book as many shows in that city as possible right. <laughs> you're, inst you're instantly bankrupt because you decided that you want to be Rock star and one of us. Right. So there you go. Dispelling. Don't some own stuff. Stuff. Don't, don't own your shit. So you said that you you dislike the age of social media. However, the technology involved has mm -hmm. been 
by and large for for bands in the at the level that say I'm playing at right now uh, has been a bit of a boon. Have you guys noticed it as a boon when it comes to that kind of, or even just the ready, readily available technology for recording purposes? Because that's becoming insanely cheap and right. super powerful. Right. Uh, is that more of a how much of that is a boon to Mushroom Head and Ventana because you're playing at two different levels there? Uh, and how much of that is more of a hindrance? Um, well, you went to social media than recording, so that'd be two parts. Two, yeah, two, two parts. parts. I apologize. So on the social media, um, on the social media end, the great part about it is that you can promote your shit, you know, and you can put it out there. The bad side about it now is that over the years, I've noticed Facebook traffic is getting throttled. Oh God, so bad, especially and since they just changed their algorithm. Now they're making it to where, unless you're putting money mm -hmm. behind your posts, your fans don't see them. So like, we have almost a million followers. Every time I make a post about a tour, only 2,000 people see the fucking post. So like, what good is that doing? Right. Yeah. But, oh, you want to put $500 behind it? Then you can get the demographic and select this and select that. <laughs> and then hope that that works too, or it, it's really, weird how it's become and I, I, I definitely see Facebook you know in the next few years potentially being replaced by something else yeah because I have a feeling it's gonna turn into what MySpace became it yeah a very very boss where I mean I get more spam on Facebook now than anything and yeah I'm getting I'm seeing stuff that I don't even want to see it's like just it's getting so very strange but on the the band front um, the good part is that I found good avenues with you know Ventana and Mushroom Red is that when you're doing um, things like if you, you want to like pre-sale something or sell something on your own, right? You can use that platform to then reach X amount of people instead of just throwing on eBay and waiting. You know, so it's right. like okay, you throw it up there, we're selling this mask or um, you know, there's Ven or like Ventana. Like I did a, a pre-order where it was like, hey, pre-order the album. You know, and if, you know, if you pre-order it, sign comes with you know, sure, whatever. And I was able to fund the pressing of that because, because of the pre-orders, you know, and I didn't have to give anyone a cut but the PayPal, you know, so it wasn't like a label had to do it for you or anything, like you can kind of take control over your own fans, mm -hmm. and that's an awesome tool because of that. Or like my uh, haunted house that I had that is currently, um, we're still looking for a new building, but we had for a few years, like we were selling tickets like mad through social media. Um, because the one guy, uh, Nick Francis, that does all that, um, he's the other, well, one of the owners, um, he did all the, the ticketing online with Facebook, and he's a super Facebook nut nerd. I mean, I don't even know how he knows half the shit he knows, <laughs> but he's like one of those coding nerds and knows how to make everything generate work um, nice. with, with social media. But we were selling out events on, on social media. That's awesome. In advance. Like, yeah. And no haunted houses were really doing that yet. So, and then now he works for multiple other companies and, and does basically that for places all around. Uh, have have you done any experiments with like Patreon or crowdfunding aside from the pre-sale stuff? I don't like the crowdfunding because it makes you kind of seem too desperate. <laughs> like, zombie, hey, we're trying to make an album. Speaking, Give us money and we'll make it. <laughs> like, speaking of horror movies, zombie crowdfunded 31 and... I, 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 and I wouldn't his, even. I wouldn't even waste my time watching it. No, I won't watch it. You're not a zombie fan. No, really. I'm a white zombie fan. Fair enough. Fair I'm enough. not a Rob Zombie. <laughs> fan. Um, I love white zombie. And, I love this early stuff that he did. I love that first Rob Zombie record. But his Halloween, between his Halloween movies and the other shit that he's done, not even House of a Thousand Corpses. What you mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's Texas Chainsaw. Look, Am I crazy? I'll, I'll, Am I'll I crazy? Give it to you. I'll give Texas it to Chainsaw you. Massacre. I'll give it to without you. a chainsaw. For sure. I'll give it to you. Fuck that. Movie. <laughs> Everyone blows that movie like it's so crazy. But I remember it when it's not that it's crazy. I think it's. I, I remember think it's the diet. No. Otis. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because freaking Bill Mosley uh, is, is the shit, and he's yeah. awesome. And yeah. I, I feel bad saying anything against him, but he's. He's awesome. amazing. But it was just like you also had Bill Mosley in your movie too, and you had him wearing skin and like. <laughs> I, and 
like they picked the hitchhiker and the detour with the Captain Spaulding thing. It was the barbecue joint. Right. It was the same goddamn story. I just couldn't get into it. And because of that movie was hyped for so many years. Remember, they weren't going to put it out because it was so because extreme. Because it was so bad. Yeah, that no, I remember that shit. It's so extreme and so violent that it's not coming out. So that made the hype huge. Right. It was like Blair Witch hype. Right. You know? And then you go see it and you're like... <laughs> this is the movie everyone was... I, I, I honestly, I, I dig the movie, but I kind of attribute some of that to nostalgia just because I was right. younger when it came out. Right, I was older. <laughs> way more judgmental, <laughs> way more jaded. But um, I do like, I do like The Devil's Rejects. Yeah. But that's the only one of and his he's doing, he movies just finished, that I like. He just finished I uh, doing like a sequel, sequel to it, which I don't know how the hell. I, ju- I actually just did a bit on uh, we'll Week of Nerddom about, like, you killed your fucking protagonist at the end of the last one. Is this going to be a prequel? You already did the prequel, too. So right. It doesn't equate, but... No, it's just grasp at straws because nothing else is working. I mean, have you, have you seen freaking... What was the what was the witch one? Uh, witch of Salem? Salem? Yeah, I didn't like that movie. That was long and boring. I felt, like I, I felt like I needed a lobotomy. Like there was movie. there was suspense, but only it was no, because it you were waiting for something to happen that yeah. never did. Yes, yes that's absolutely. I, I tried watching it. It took me seven tries to get through it because I kept falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and and I love witches. I love witchcraft and just the theme and how right. evil how evil you can get with like witch movies. Right. And it was that. And like the evilest he got on that was the that record that they kept playing. Yeah, garbage. Agreed. Um, garbage. But, and you know, and the way he completely slaughtered Michael Myers is going to forever burn in my brain. Yeah. I still ride the fence garbage. On, on the, on the garbage. his remix. Uh, no one wanted to see Michael Myers in high school and middle school. Back to getting, that's, getting that's beat true. up and picked on and, oh, I have the poor mother and my dad's abusive and, uh, and I torture animals. Can we get any more freaking cliche? <laughs> It was way scarier when you didn't. When you knew who the nothing hell about it. That was a hundred percent. Is he a zombie? Is he? Who the hell is this? And in season, in the third movie, does he exist? Right. Um. So, kind of bird walking again. But we're back to right. we're we <laughs> back to social media and no, actually this the recording. We're, we're good. We're good yeah. with the social. I like it. You, okay. I feel like you covered that. Fair yeah. enough. Um. But now. Uh, continuing kind of along social media, social media exposes a lot of different people to new music, mm-hmm. arguably, like Spotify, uh, Pandora, kind of, and, and things of that nature. Uh, in the States, metal and more aggressive styles of music uh, have been portrayed as a lot less popular than uh, the Spotify just a couple months ago said that according to their numbers, metal, heavy metal, is the most popular genre of music across the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you, ha, what has been kind of your experience with the genre and, and the American audience versus when you guys go overseas? How does that kind of juxtapose itself? Mm. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> because in America, we're taught that there's three music genres that sell well. Right. Pop, rap, and country. Right. Oh yeah, there's definitely a uh, conspiracy against heavy metal in America. Totally. So, it, do you see do you see that reflected? Let, let's let's rephrase. It was what the, the Grammys. They they cut out. They don't. The yeah, and and eventually they cut out the live. They caught it. And I'm good for them. Look. It was it didn't match up with their tour. Right. They just couldn't but, be there. But I'm glad they raised the stink. That, no, I because I, and, they, and that was I was glad that I woke up and saw that in my newsfeed that Ben Seville basically said, "Fuck you, yep. Grammys." And I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because um, those guys are great. I've known those guys forever, and they're, they're I want to talk about staying humble. Event Seven, yeah, no, is a band sure. that's fucking to stay humble because, like I said, they opened up for us one of their first tours. Uh, they, they did a Warped Tour. Um, I saw them. They on opened the- for us, and they didn't have anything. They didn't have any production of it. They were like, remember, um, Matt would go, "Hey, can we borrow your fog machine for our show?" You know, and I'd like, <laughs> I'd stand on the side of the stage and like run like Mushroom Red Stroke because they were. I didn't, Music was okay, but I liked them as people. They were really yeah. cool guys. I wanted to help them out. Like so, I'm running the fog machine and running their strobes. Now I go to, now we go to their shows and I joke to them. Go, hey, can I borrow your, can I borrow your fire? Can I borrow your ninety thousand freaking video screens and on our house set? But they're super cool. Like they and me and uh, J Man went out to their show in uh, Toledo and you know full VIP, you know, pass. Oh, that's all awesome. that shit. We were hanging out backstage all night, fucking you know, t- 
talking, drinking, going down memory lane. But um, those dudes are awesome. I really, I get the impression, and this is totally probably just their public personas, but I definitely get the impression about Shadows that are Matt, as you know, <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that he he puts off that he's kind of an arrogant dick. Yeah. But I, I met him on that work tour before yeah. they went on tour with you guys, and it was like, he was just a kid. Make it, yeah. And those are my favorite two records of theirs, where uh, Waking and Fall and Sound Waking and Fall is a great one. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm so sad that he doesn't do that vocal anymore. Right, I know it has something to do with the thing, and he again got, we're getting into technique. But it's also his, good because because through that, look how they, much they became a lot more like digestible on the radio, like huge. The, I, like the music no, 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 I, I dig, know, I dig the shit out of everything right. up until Backcountry. Right, <laughs> but you know that's what put them on the map. You know? That's true. It's totally true, and I love that record. Uh, it, by and large, there's a couple of really shit tracks on there but by and large I really like right. it and I feel like their producer was like hey shadows let's push your vocals until you have to go back to, to the hospital right? <laughs> yeah. um but yeah no that's I I the rest of the band I feel like they put off the persona of down there kids right. but I just feel like man no they're cool. all completely cool that's really cool. and they're very family oriented um I know shadows has you know his wife and his kids out all the time like they had road cases that were full of like Kids toys, kids toys and nice. like a road case that had diapers in it and things and like they're not like that's really motley cool. crew that's really they're cool. professional they're you know family oriented i mean some of them have been with the same girlfriends wives for the well and, and the rev them. his girlfriend he was with her all through their yeah. career through yeah career. They're, they're great kids and i wish them nothing but the best and that they keep continuing because it's insane to see where they how big they like it, it blows yeah. my mind to see how they're the new gnr Right, it's crazy. Good <laughs> and, for them. And and Vengeance uh, and, and uh, why can't I think of the other guitar Sinister players? Sinister Gates. Gates, yeah, Vengeance and the Gates. I don't know their real names because I'd never run right. into them, but you obviously do. Uh, their their guitar playing, regardless of the sound, I feel like their guitar playing is stand up enough that right. you can justify their fame. Mm-hmm. So, like, totally more power to them. Uh, back to the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just just one it's last just one last little time. bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got 30 minutes. Oh, sweet. Yeah, no. I'm on stage at 745. Yeah, so we're I gotta totally going to make it. Contacts and stupid makeup. <laughs> that actually gotta, leads us I into cool. the last uh, few questions. The masks. I'm not going to ask you about why, because I know you guys have answered that question mm-hmm. a million fucking times. And, the real and answer the, is because you're because ageless. Because it's fun. Mm-hmm. Because you're ageless. Well, that, and, and as like we were talking about on the way here is it helps you get into that character. I mean, right. even even Corey Taylor and the dudes in Slipknot have made that statement. It's right. like, I'm one guy off stage. I put that mask on and I become somebody else. Yeah. And that's the beauty of putting on the mask. Yeah, like, um, you know, an example, like I've been at shows and events, you know, or um, of my friend's band, you know, is opening up or something. And they're like, hey, we're covering this Nine Inch Nails song. You want to come up on stage and do it? And I'm just like... No, not really. Because <laughs> I'm like just like this. I'm just. Richard. I'm like I can't because I've done that before. And I'm like Mr. Stage Fright. Right. right? And I'm like this. Like I get a microphone. I'm like uh, no. I can't <laughs> Can do I it. Can I just not face the crowd, I don't please? Like this. Like like feel myself sweating. Like what the fuck. <laughs> but you put you know the contacts in, the makeup, and my costume, and I'm bouncing off the walls, right? And upside down, freaking kicking people in the face, and. Loving it, like I love being in character. Right, I have a long history of the, acting in haunted houses and things the, like that. The character of Stitch. The first time I saw you guys, uh, you and Venus and Jamin, I feel like were the ones that really stood out to me because you are so animated mm-hmm. on stage and because you become a character. On right, stage, and that's really awesome. Uh, it's but, important when you wear a costume to actually become a character. Because I've seen bands that do costumes and stuff, and like they just and look they're like, still just they just look those. like dudes in costumes. Yeah. Or they're like not doing it right, like they're not painting the exposed neck parts, and they just look like they're wearing some cheesy mask. Well, have you like, seen? Have you seen the, the 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 what's their name? Kiss. I have it right here. Kissing Candace. Have I'm friends with Joey. Friends and with his guys. mask is insane. Is it, 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 it reminds me of um. I think he got the idea from that Immortal. There's a company that makes Immortal masks, and they make a doll face mask. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, like yeah. That's, that's kind of his looks, what I his it looks was a little cooler, crunched. but I think he. I think he originally was wearing that doll face, then he had a mask maker make a custom one. And um, his, but the mask goes down to his right, chest. Right, so it like looks real, it yeah. looks good. And I, and I like that he wears like the dress. It, his character is great. I've had a conversation with him a few times, and he, I think he needs to 
um, tighten up the look on some of the other guys because some of the other guys just look like a little shaky. Yeah, like, I, I, I caught a couple costumes of Costumes not complete here. Like, there's a couple dudes that look okay. And they'll get it because they're developing as a band. I mean, when I first saw those guys, they were just, uh, they opened for us and they stood out to me because they had, uh, it was a Denver show. No shit. No, Minnesota. I can't remember where the fuck it was. <laughs> but they all tour. It's all the same. But they were like a local opener. It might have even been Mayhem and they had allowed a local. I can't remember. Sorry, Joey. I don't remember where the fuck I met you. <laughs> um, but I was walking by to like go, you know, use the bathroom, and I heard like the song was over, and like they fucking um, said a quote from the movie Trolls. Right. Like they made a Neil Bog uh, reference. <laughs> okay. And like no one in the crowd fucking knew what the fuck it had. No and idea. I'm like, I don't, I fucking scream from across the like fucking Neil Bach fuck you know like <laughs> screaming and I don't even think he was looking in the crowd you know like who the hell said that and, and then after, and they were using Ghostbuster samples and had like the, you know all this crazy shit and I was like okay the music's a little you know that newer yeah you know no, it, it, scenester you know metal stuff yeah but but it was okay you know but the the uniqueness of them pulling a lot of those 80 samples and shit is what caught my attention then I became friends with Joey and we to sh talk shit to each other all the time, back and forth. And they're actually gonna be on that, um, so we're on the Summer Scream Tour this fall. Right. It's us, Power Man 5000's on half of it. Um, Psycho Stick's on it for some of it, and then the Browning, um, and Kiss and Candace is on it as well. Nice. Um, and Unset Fate's on it as well. Um, and then they got some other bands on that shirt as well. It's probably like local openers. Probably, you know. Um, but that should be a fun tour, because, uh, Get along with all those guys, so it'd be like a whole tour of people that we know, and they're probably going to get into some fun hijinks. Um, so when you guys were coming up with the masks, mm -hmm. you started. I don't know if you actually started in the band when they were still doing the latex with the yarn. Where you? Did those you, were just spandex masks. Those were spandex. Yeah. I, they they look like latex in the photos. The um the original. It was like ninety eight or ninety nine, yeah. ninety nine when they just went when to like straight M3 black came out. It was it was straight black and black jumpsuits. It was just supposed to look like. Kind of like the dudes in Ghost BC. I don't know what that is. You know, uh, uh, kind of power metal in the vein of Iron Maiden. Uh, they're English, Swedish. Oh, nothing there. They're they're like huge in uh, oh. the UK or whatever. But yeah, the same thing. They they all wear right. Yeah, the black. idea was to switch to a Death Squad because that was right after Slipknot came out. Right. And if you go back and look at the old photos of Mushroom Head, it's insanely comparable. Um, and that funny because we get it, we get the comparison now, but it's like we mushroom completely changed to not <laughs> look like Venus that. drew when I met him the first time. Venus drew the comparison. He said we technically started writing the mask first. There's no, you can't make the argument. No, the timeline, the timeline adds up, and I wish there was uh, a stronger internet back yeah, in yeah. 1993 because there would be more proof. But there is, and 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 he said the the thing that killed it for me was their bass player wore a pig war. Sorry, <laughs> I was about to English. Cringe. I was about. I'm, Grammar bass player, I was going to say was wearing, and then decided to say war, whatever. Bass player was wearing a pig mask. Mm -hmm. says, My name's fucking Pig Venus. Right. <laughs> the first, I mean, the first album cover, and they even changed masks immediately after that first album cover because the first album cover looked even more like Mushroom Head. I mean, back right. then, Mushroom Head had the orange jumpsuits. The bar yeah, goes. no, yeah. I, I remember seeing videos they from had, them after, I mean, after Skinny after had a gas mask with the spikes coming off of it. Fucking Bronson had the bondage mask, which on the first album cover, Jim Root is wearing, wearing a bondage, bondage mask. Because uh, the guy he replaced, that was his mask right. before Jim got the jester. The, but yeah, that, And even the jester face was the mask that a guy in Mushroom that, Head had, but it came off a full head that had like latex jester things. Mm -hmm. They just cut the face out right. and then slapped it on there. Um, the Dick Nose mask, we've had that before too. That actually comes from Distortions, comes from, which is a Colorado Which company. is actually um, taken from Twin Peaks. Yep. Yeah. They just added a dunce cap on top of it. Um, so all that early mushroom stuff is all riddled with Twin Peaks samples. But that, that the, the, but yeah, the, that feud, quote unquote. That could, feud okay, so then, anyway, so the, the, black, <laughs> the black masks came into effect as like a kind of like a, you know, some, it was something that Ski came up with for like a reset button. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, Here's the reset button, we'll go from there. And then he came up with the X's, and originally it was just like X, X, and then the lines, kind of like how in cartoons, mm -hmm. you know, like the cat dies, uh, and that's and there's what they the X's yeah. and the eyes. Uh, so that was kind of like the represent, represent, you know, the death. Right. And um, and then it evolved from there, and he kept drawing and noodling other ones, and then uh, this local artist, uh, Rob Musel, 
kind of drew like the final version off of what you know Skinny was coming mm -hmm. up with, and that became the X that face. That became of the, the logo. So yeah, the logo. Yeah, I have a still. my guitar player has a tattoo on his arm. Right. Uh, and they were never mind. Uh, that's for off camera. <laughs> and which brings to another valid point, like when you you go back to like the questions with you know changing members, is it a yeah. positive or negative thing? Like even in that situation of Mushroom being forced to change their look, came the X face. The X face may never have even become a thing. Or right. The characters that we have now may never have became a thing. Like Mushroom went basically from having. The store bought altered mm -hmm. Halloween masks to like getting into the custom game, and now you guys sculpting have, our own, you know, yeah. having the mask sculptors come up with our own ideas and crazy designs, and then we can resell them. And you do those crazy 420 shows, yeah. and you do the Halloween shows. Yeah, I love the yeah. the pumpkin masks. Right. Those yeah, are my we're, favorite ones. Again, we're in a way better spot because of something negative. Is is was that relationship forged with? Do you guys go through like one maker? Um, we were using David Greathouse. Which he's been multiple movies. Um, he was on Face Off. He almost won the right. one year. <clears throat> um, but he does all kinds of shit. Um, he's been around the area in Cleveland doing haunted houses and shit for years. He's kind of like a local legend. Everyone sure. Knows, everyone knows Dave Greathouse in the Cleveland area. Um, but you know, with his schedule being busy, he was doing more movies. And with how quickly we were wanting to like advance the look into something different, um, the timelines just weren't right. working out. So we wound up connecting with. Uh, Jason Kisner now who we've been using name, actually um, he did all the masks for this you know the new cycle that's cool you know um, and it, it was again it was you know fresh takes so we were able to get more character involvement yeah the mask look a little more realistic a little more you know like movie monster like yeah very much um, but I met him because uh, we played a horror hound in uh, Indianapolis and we had like a booth set up next to Kane Hodder and we were doing like photos and shit just like normally would do. And it was cooler talking shit with Kane Hodder all day. That was that was awesome. Was that like, was, that was a nice bucket list movie. check. Yeah. He had this fart spray and he kept like fucking with people. <laughs> like all day long, Jason Voorhees is fucking knocking fart spray. <laughs> it definitely cool stuff. And then we had like Norman Reedus and fucking this I think it was that was even I think it was only season one or two of Walking Dead was out. So, was so he was, was still Jack more Jackson. known for Boondock Saints. Boondock, yeah. And it was um, all three of them, even the guy that plays Rocco. Right, is it uh, Rocco? Yeah, it's Rocco. Yeah. I can't think of the actor's name. but I yeah. can never remember their names either. But um, they were all three there watching the show. Fucking, you know, look to my right. Norman Reed is eating a slice of pizza, watching Mushroom. like, <laughs> eat pizza. Like, my, like, my life is strange, man. <laughs> but um, it was at that convention. He was dressed up, uh, Jason Kisner. He was wearing like all SWAT stuff but he was like an uh, umbrella court yeah like, okay uh, i don't know never met the guy before but he was doing like cosplay uh, like umbrella uh, court corporation fucking swat officer and he had like, these big riot shields with the umbrella like a bunch of custom stuff yeah. like the, the ar rifles and all swatted out and like face blacked out with the you know, spandex mask and the goggles and then we're like hey can we have you guys just stand on stage as props when we play because it'll look cool. Just stand on this, just stand there. It'll look like part of the show. There's five bucks. Just we'll make it. Still. It'll look more badass. And he's like, oh yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> and then um, got his contact information. He told me he made props and things like that. Um, and he made like proton pack replicas that are like exactly Hell to yeah. a T. Like he even makes them out of the same material as they make them. He's one of those nerds. Right. Like okay, this one thing was actually a bottle of whiteout. <laughs> so let's so somebody so just some painted out. that, you know, and because actually one of the pieces on a proton pack is a bottle of white out. Nice. It's absurd. <laughs> what they actually make that shit out of. But um I wanted one so bad. I wanted one as a kid, like a real proton pack, you know. All the lights are completely accurate and everything. So he made me a custom one of those and I paid him for it and I got a trap as well. And then it was like, you know, you ever make masks? <laughs> He's like, Oh, I'm trying to start to learn, you know, how to like you you know, not learn, I don't want to say learn. He was already doing some stuff, trying, trying to like, get into it more. He was, yeah, pra practicing and making his own, you know, kind of things. And then um, this kind of catapulted him to go, okay, well, come up with eight characters. You know? Nice. And then now he's been working on the new stuff. He's done all the one off things. The mask we're wearing tonight, he sculpted as well. We're doing like like these half mask fiberglass. Yeah, I, I like, saw masquerade the, looking. the pictures. Those are evil looking. Yeah. <laughs> those that are was awesome. actually, the inspiration for those comes directly from the game Bioshock. Sweet! And, she's a uh, giant fan. I love the and, game. Uh, she's an amazing fan. Bioshock and Evil Within, the smile is yeah. is kind of taken from the masks that they're, those characters are wearing in that video game. And then the, the masquerade splicer look, mm -hmm. you know, as we're wearing the costumes. That's and, really cool. Um, there actually is, in Bioshock 2, you don't see it that much. It's not a really heavily used one, but there was like a devil 
mask. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it was black and white it. and it had like the whole. We just the, finished that, like, a but it didn't have the same same exact look. But it's definitely inspired by. That's it. really cool. After sh shit that we do, it's like we get inspiration. I love this thing. It's, Let's try it's movies, video games. Yeah. It's things you see. You're like, that's awesome, you know. And you kind of like get inspired by, you know, multiple different things. Like even my Stitch mask. Like I love Hellraiser and Resident Evil and you know Baraka. <laughs> Fair enough. So basically, my stitch mask it's is those three things. Those three things. Throw them in a blender. I can. I can There's totally my character. see. Yeah, I can totally see all three of those. Yeah. The Cenobite and the. Right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, and and then we'll, we'll we'll bring it to an end with this. Uh, just a couple more. Uh, you guys came up 2001 ish is when XX was officially released and to the rest of the world. to the rest of the world. Right. 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 So uh, outside of Cleveland, it brought your profile up. Right. Um, at about that same time, we've already talked about Slipknot, but there was Moto Grader, there was Mudvayne, there were a right. bunch of other I wish bands. wish Mudvayne was still around. God, you sick. have no idea. Ryan was Martini's it? new new project is really cool. Yeah. It's a little jammy if you like jam stuff. No. Not really. I no. <laughs> it's, but it's fucking Ryan. Right. So, like, it's that element of it is awesome, and they definitely have some heavy stuff, but it's all instrumental, so it right. takes a little bit of getting into it. Anyway, but I love Ryan Martini. Ryan Martini is God on the bass. Um, so that was kind of, that That faded out. That masked wave kind of faded out. And now, really, the stalwarts are you guys and Slipknot. And, and even they don't really... And they don't even really do it as much anymore. Right. I mean, they, they do it on stage, but they all have their side partners, so everybody knows what their faces look like. Right. For a lot of people watching this, this is the first time they've seen your face. So that's there's something to be said about that. But... Um, I totally okay. <laughs> now we're seeing that happen again. Again, we talked about kissing, uh, kissing Candace. There's Terror Universal, American oh. Overdose. Oh, dude, thank you. Oh God, I thought I was gonna be the only one that really didn't you know, like those I guys. Should, and, I, and I shouldn't really be showing my my true reactions to this because I don't want to. Because you know, yeah, I got friends that, in some of these bands. Yeah, it's not that you want to piss them off, but you right. you, you understand. Like, but when I see some of it, I'm just like, you can tell when people are just doing, doing it, it to be scared, just to do it. Yeah. Like, I like, you know, nothing against American Overdose guys, but like their look, look is just very confused. Mm -hmm. You know, like the one singer's got a mask, but then the other guys are wearing like haunted house makeup or, uh -huh. or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, if you're gonna do it, you have to do it. You can't just have like one guy is super selling the look and then five other guys just look like dudes in- Yeah, just look like dudes in makeup. Messy makeup and shit. And then constantly tag our pages and spam our pages <laughs> with your stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't so know. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm all about doing costumes. The like I said, I'm right. friends with the Kissing Candace guys. I'm friends with you know friends with anyone. I'm like, oh, you're wearing costumes. You're just like, no, 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 no. It's like you look awesome. You look awesome. Yeah, Kiss was doing it. Boy was doing it long before. Anything. I wish more bands did costumes, but I wish they did it right. Right. So that was that was going to be what it was. Is that, do you feel like? Because I honestly felt like there was a lot of. There's a lot of mojo with you guys, and there's a lot of mojo with the dudes in Moto Grader before Ivan sold his soul. There's a lot of mojo with the dudes in Slipknot. There's a lot, you know, there's a cohesiveness that I feel like is lacking. Not necessarily Kissing Candace, because when I did look into them a little bit more, I was like, you know, I feel like these guys kind of get it, but the rest of this new pack, to me personally, I'm not, again, I don't want you to throw anyone in the mud if you don't want right. to, but I just feel like they don't get it. They see the aesthetic, mm -hmm. and they, they spend more time getting the aesthetic than they do with the sound. Right. And, and it's music. Or, right? they, or, you know, the music doesn't match the sound. Like, right. There's a band, you know, from our scene, I won't mention their name, don't but um, I don't want to give them a free plug. <laughs> but for years, like, they out of nowhere just started wearing masks. And then they started talking shit in the scene about, like, oh, you know, we're the new, we're going to take over the scene for Martian Red. We're going to be the next Martian Red. And, like, okay, guys, good luck. But um, I always made jokes because they just look stupid in their like they just you know like they don't look like a band that should be wearing masks and the music doesn't match right. the fact they're wearing masks. It's like they're just trying to jump on that bandwagon and I and they they called me a dick for years and made posts you know that I'm an asshole and this and that and that just like a couple weeks ago they took off the masks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it's indicative like, of yeah, exactly. So what? And now, it was pretty funny because then we immediately put them on a show. <laughs> <laughs> As kind of like a Steve's, do then to stop looking stupid and put you on a show. Just do you, boo boo. Yeah, because you know it's like you don't just 
be a band. I mean, I don't know. What what do you what is it that you guys uh, you specifically and maybe if you, you can answer what you've heard other guys listening to on the bus. What what is it right now that gets you excited about music? Like what other bands? Not necessarily theatrical wise or whatever, but just music that gets you going. Like there's nothing modern. Fair enough. I mean, I, I can't. The most you modern, that. the most modern stuff I do like is that Periphery band. Fuck. I, fair enough. Um, so and some of so their stuff gets a the little annoying after stuff. a while. But like some of their shit really reminds me of like old Incubus, old Deftones, kind of like a little bit of Splash of Faith no more. It's their their some of their music's really good. Their but sound definitely. strikes me as one of Incubus or or whatever trying to emulate Mush, uh, Mushuga. Honestly. Right. Mushuga. They do a lot of that, which because everyone's they're, doing. That. They're gent. Everyone. And I, and, I, and I hate that. I'm like, it's just so funny that Meshuggah barely gets any recognition, yet all of these hip, modern, crazy bands that are writing their shit on computers yeah. aren't even playing those drum fills. Right. Or no, those off time signatures in, that they're coming up with. with. They're doing it in Pro Tools, with where Meshuggah freaking just sits there and fucking blasts it out, and they get no credibility. Oh, man. With Obzine, uh, we actually went into some Meshuggah a couple episodes ago where it was. It was, this is not, this is how you do an unprogrammed drum, right? <laughs> and then we did like Infinite Annihilator where it was, this is obviously a programmed drum. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, what, is, what is on constant rotation on your iPod then? Since it's nothing modern. Well, my iPod or your uh, phone or recently was stolen in Cleveland, downtown Cleveland. Um, my window got broken into lovely downtown Cleveland. Um, Obama. <laughs> everything's Obama's fault, right? <laughs> if it was Chicago, it would be Obama's fault. Fair enough. And this is hometown? Yeah, there you go. Right. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, my iPod got stolen. But honestly, what I listen to the most of now, and it's mostly all the video games I play, fall, is I listen to jazz more than anything. Hell yeah, fair I listen enough. to like old swing, 30s, 40s, we just, 50s. We just showed our guitar player... Uh, Take five for the first time. Nice. And he's like, what is this? Yeah. Because they, they write goofy time signatures mm -hmm. unknowing. It's just the way we yeah. group, right? And he he'd never heard that. And it was like the most popular thing mm -hmm. in five, four times. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm coming up. I'm trying to still make, like, combine the genres properly, but I'm still trying to write for Venton. And I'm trying to write like a awesome jazz industrial style time signature thing. Cause I love all that old tiny music. Yeah. It's creepy as shit. It's great. Like when you listen to it, not in the realm of like, you know, it, you automatically think, all right, I'm going to get murdered. Because <laughs> this is always what you hear on the record player when you enter the killer's house. It's always some old, creepy, freaking old timey song. And the yeah. lyrics are always so disturbing when you really break down what's being said in some right. of those songs. It's great haunted house uh, soundtrack. I use this shit all the time. But games like Bioshock and you know, all that. It made me obsessed with Fallout soundtrack. Yeah, they yeah, made yeah. me obsessed with that genre of so you know, I'll be tuning the you know the radio eighty eight point three in, in Cleveland or whatever and it comes in like shit. Mm -hmm. So it sounds even better. <laughs> it's like old and then it's like all of a sudden it's like you're going through Silent Hill and it's all <laughs> and then it comes in and it's all warp sounding. I love that shit because I mean the last thing I want to do at the end of the day is listen to heavy metal. Apparently. I listen to a lot of eighties music, like I'll turn on the eighties channels all the time, you know singing every word to Elton John and Billy Joel, you know, because <laughs> that's genre, you know, generation I grew up, for some odd reason, I know the words to every Rod Stewart song. Fair enough. I thank my mom for that. Can't hold it against but, you. Um, <laughs> my mom did the same thing to me. It's all good. But, um, you know, even like doo-wop, I love like doo-wop. Like I listen to Supremes, the Supremes, freaking Temptations, like, I, I like, I love all that kind of shit. Fair enough. To me, that's more inspiring to put on and jam to than like, <laughs> like I want to, I like being on stage and perf like, performing the heavy stuff to like let that aggression out. I'm like, the last thing I, want I, to do I feel like that's is listen to that all day yeah. long. I feel like that's why I stopped being in heavy metal bands. I still, we still like the stuff we do is still aggressive-ish, like about as aggressive as Primus ever gets. Right. Uh, but because I listen to the banger, the really super mashuga all the time, like it's. One or the other, I totally understand that dichotomy. Mm -hmm. you, you're either playing it or you're listening to it. Doing both is a little draining. Mm -hmm. So totally get you. But, but um, we had, um, you know, and if we do listen to anything, it's, it's only something from the '90s. It's always like yeah. vulgar display of power, or it's <laughs> the downward spiral, or it's you know something older. Um, have you heard any of Trent's new stuff? He's putting out that. Uh, back I haven't. I, I very Trent, Yeah, Trent Reznor has always been a huge influence in what I've wanted to do with music, mm -hmm. and a huge influence in like everything in general, but I just haven't really gotten into his latest 
works because I feel like he's kind of like he just released the first single. When you're not really pissed off and angry about yeah. anything anymore, yeah. and, you're, and your bills are, and your bills are paid, and you can't really write that angsty shit anymore. I guess I don't know because I don't feel like Nine Inch Nails is Nine Inch Nails anymore. It just kind of sounds like he's writing a soundtrack for Atticus Ross. Yeah. Every time now, <laughs> which is good. It's good in well, its own way. But partner. I found the new Nine Inch Nails to be something I put on when I'm going to sleep, right? Or you know, or relaxing or something. It's less. It's it's a different vibe now. The new track. I love the Fragile. Out. The Fragile is a great album. Fantastic album. After that, it just kind of didn't. It's very bold, like the, especially the new the, this last. I might like it. And Add violence right. was I kind of going yeah. down from <laughs> from I, yeah, something I, else. I said I have to check it out. I yeah. Have. It's it's. The new one, like you said, it's not the same now. You can't be right. aggressive for your whole life. You right. can't be aggressive for your whole career mm -hmm. unless you're in mushroom. Right. <laughs> then you're always aggressive. But that's got, that's for different you reasons because you don't have your bills paid right. and you don't. Right. You got <laughs> social media to make you pissed off. There you go. Uh, so yeah, awesome comments that people make. Uh, if they, it, now's the time to, I mean, obviously you guys are on tour right now. Ventana's on tour. What is what are we looking forward to? New record, um, obviously. Oh, well, the new um, Mushroomhead is going to be releasing a DVD volume three, right? Which we've got well, the yeah. two previous ones, um, and that's coming out in August. Cool. I don't know the exact street date, but it's like mid-August, and then the, that tour we're doing, the Summer of Screams tour, is going to kind of launched the promotion inside. of that cool. coincide with that um but that dvd is great it was all of it shot in uh 4k you know high def cameras we had like really nice cameras out with us we shot a lot of our own music videos um that haven't been released that are going to be awesome out there as well good um so in about two days it'll be leaked on the internet you know once <laughs> once the interview's over they're on the internet already but um yeah, there's exclusive videos that we spent a lot of time making ourselves that people don't really understand. Like, you'll see the production of videos too, and you'll also get the impression of like, wow, these guys must have paid a shitload of money. And like, we did, but we did it all ourselves. Dude, yeah, that's all. We built the sets at the haunted house I was doing at the time. Um, so that was a huge benefit. So we had a building with 17 foot ceilings that we can build a massive set and then just select them. Right. And then, then I opened up the haunted house and they became party sets. <laughs> like, uh, for the one video, um, We Are the really Truth. Stopped. We did a complete beginning to end recreation of the Evil Dead. Nice. You're gonna love this music. Nice. We haven't That's leaked really cool. anything from it because we've kept it. Because it's all in house. Yeah. So. And we've told people like kind of like what it was, but we haven't leaked anything from it. But the band's really not in it that much. It's the band members are in it, but they're playing. But they're in different normal characters. people, right? You know, like you know, like, I don't want to ruin it. Sure. But it's <laughs> fucking awesome. Like we built me and. Uh, Dr. F, because um, he used to build haunted houses as well. We built, uh, and uh, Robbie uh, Diablo helped as well with, with some of the stuff. But um, two scale, like literally two scale, looked exactly inside and out, just like the old Dead Cabin. It took it took about like I don't know four weeks to build. That's but, like, awesome. Raised floor inside and everywhere, and then in another section of the uh, building where there was like stairs going up, and there was like a wooden platform. I built the fake. You know, like the, the, the trap door. The like trap I built a trap door so we could do the shots nice. of that. Because when you're when you're building a cabin with a raised uh -huh. six inch floor, you can't get you can't get under it. Can't get under <laughs> it's six inch floor. You know, you can't you can't. So I had like the fake one made. Sure. But then we had another another, another area, like, yeah, where we did those shots. And I mean, when you see the shots, it's like it's insane how much it looks just like it's fucking really cool. Like it's super impressive. I thought that it's was really that cool. was one of the most fun ones that we've done because we tried making the movie video. You know, it's pretty cool. Lots of blood. So the DVD, <laughs> any, it, well, if you're doing right, you've well, got to have gallons of blood, which we have gallons and gallons of blood. But um, so video, <clears throat> video, and then yeah, DVD, and then we we start working on a new record, like probably over the summer, I imagine. We'll after be, this tour, you know, after everyone like, decompresses, it's right back to getting this new music, music uh, rolling. Don't have a solid release date on that yet, but I imagine it's going to be early, you know, twenty early next year. Yeah, early twenty nineteen. Because you always want to, because you know it'll probably be ready by the end of the year. But but you got to give yourself that leeway. So you'd also you also don't well because then the the, the the what a thing that the labels look at too is that they don't want to release a record in December or November, right? Because then it's it, it within a month. Tour. <clears throat> well, no, within a month it's two thousand eighteen's record. It's yeah. old news. It's like people that. In January of 2019, they're already buying the 20, 2020 car. 
Right. You know, right. oh, 2019 car, though, so outdated. <laughs> so they look at that kind of too with music, especially yeah. trying to get interviews and getting like new fresh tours. It's like, oh, you released an album last year. Last year was it's like two weeks ago. Two Dick. weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's usually more beneficial to have like that full year of having it new and fresh. And, right on. You know. So, uh, but that'll come soon, and I'm really excited to hear how it's going to come out. Yeah, I, as we all are. Right. I think people are going to be blown away. I yeah. I, I every record. There's going to so be a lot far, of people man. on the internet eating their words real soon. Well, because <laughs> just just looking at the evolution of your sound. And, and how you guys, everybody says it, but I feel like you guys are one of the bands that actually pulls through with reinventing your sound, at least at least in some sort of way that each record feels different from the right. last. It doesn't not sound like Mushroom Head, but it right. also doesn't sound like Savior Sorrow. And it also doesn't sound like Beautiful Songs for Ugly Children. Yeah. And it, each record has its own feeling, and, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I fucking admire that. Right. <laughs> So yeah, and that I just wanted to kind of stroke your ego for a little bit, and yeah. uh, thank you for sitting down with Generally Nerdy Stitch. No, that's great. Richard. I like being asked questions that make me want to talk. So, <laughs> so I, I, that's off I, to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you guys for watching. All the regular stuff, like, subscribe. Links in the description. All the stuff we talked about. I'm not going to transcribe this one, so I'll let the guys at Blabbermouth pretend like they can do that. And. Uh, Thank you once again, Stitch. I know you are a busy man, so I'll let you get yeah, to it. Yeah, thank you.